um, we all know there are different reasons for being in a job. I mean, some people like uh, the leisure time. They have an orientation to work that says, well, I would like to earn some money there. I don't really need to like my work, but everything I want to do is then on the weekends, in the evening, and so on. And then there are people who are interested in careers. So whatever brings you forward, what gives you a higher position or more money, this is one of the orientations that are identified. But there is also the idea of, of a calling. So you like your job, uh, you are inspired by it, you are engaged, you, you cannot uh, leave in the evenings. So you are looking forward to your work. So really this is your calling, you know that's where I want to work. Now I think everyone wants to be in a position where they feel this is my uh, calling and that's why we did some studies, but before going into it, I thought, well, where am I? I mean, I do like my work, but um, what's the way to really find your, your mission in life, your interest? And it's not easy. I mean, especially if you have my background, because where I grew up, uh, it wouldn't be the next obvious step that you become a researcher. So I just thought I will show you a little bit and then also show you the moments that transformed lives, and in my uh, case, the vocational life. So this photo is actually older than when I was born. That's my village, maybe 50 years before I was born. So no university there. That's me. My mother apparently would have preferred a daughter. I seem to like her flowers. Uh, that was important. That was my school at the beginning. Well, then we moved into a more modern building after two years. That was me with 13. And I could have stayed there, like my parents wanted me to become a mechanic. It's nice because they bought a car and then I could repair them. <laughs> but I thought that's not really why I want to be because there was something uh, at this time, I mean, it was the 70s. Uh, I was inspired by this music. I really liked this music. I started a band. You see, we were not that wild at this time. But then I also saw, well, if I play guitar, there really are artists who do it very well, like classical guitar. So I started a classical guitar training, and actually that's what I wanted to be. I, I did practice five hours a day. But then I also found out, well, I didn't have a Spanish name and I didn't start at four, so probably I will end up like my guitar teacher, and that's what I didn't aspire. So it was boring. I left home, went to the university, came to Graz, discovered libraries, books, and even without telling me I was there, I was appreciating the beauty of the building, the knowledge and everything, and well, that's me again, <laughs> a bit more excited. And this is from this summer. I, I was in the first lecture by my academic teacher, and I can still remember how excited I was by the way how he introduced psychology, how he defined things. It was really a very uh, long-lasting uh, impression on me. I later heard that when I give a talk that I have acquired some of his habits. I really appreciated the knowledge that he had. Later I met Paul McGee, who introduced me to humor research because that was my interest. Paul Ekman, uh, who works on facial expression. So I think I have always seen people that were great and this gave me inspiration. Now moved to Belfast, Queen's University, and there the major transition became because I got involved in positive psychology. Martin Seligman invited me to Akumal. We had a think tank, how to develop these ideas. Uh, the, I wrote the chapter in Character, Strengths and Virtues, met Chris Peterson, one of the founding fathers in this area. We had Martin Seligman here, and we later spoke at IPA. So I can see um, there were many steps that brought me out of the village into a major city in Austria, to Germany, to England, to the United States, to finally end up where I am. Now, how can I explain it? I, yesterday I thought, well, uh, how does this relate to what you are doing? 
So the book here, Character Strengths and Virtues, is something that positive psychology created. I mean, we all know the DSM, the uh, book that tells you what kind of illnesses exist, and you are lucky. If you're lucky, you don't have them. But what is the opposite? So in what ways can people flourish? And this was the first scientific attempt to define the good character, to look at, well, an unknown territory, so to speak. It's, it's the field of virtues. And what strengths do you have to develop those virtues? Now, with the wisdom and knowledge, courage, humanity, justice, temperance, and transcendence, these are the virtues that people all over the world uh, like. You can find them in, um, in the Greek philosophers. You can find them in Eastern religions. They're usually called slightly different, but this is what people like. Now, the ones indented are character strengths that help you lead uh, or act virtuously. I found it interesting uh, how those things influenced my life because obviously I did like the flowers, I did like the music, I did like my teacher who inspired me. So there is one strength of transcendence, appreciation of beauty. You want to be alike, you want to do good as well. Now I was uh, playing music, I liked the band music more because I could do improvisation on my guitar. So Creativity was important. I was highly curious. Uh, I didn't like the topics that I had to study during my psychology study. I went to the unknown things. Uh, well, love of learning. I did read those books. I had the perspective that, yes, uh, it's good to play music, but maybe my mission is somewhere else, and this is not really bringing me there. Perseverance, you have to stick to what you're doing and the variety of other strengths. So basically, I think uh, the way to calling or to really be engaged at your work is use your character strengths because these are the ones that make you inspired, that make you engaged. You get into flow at work because you can be yourself and you do what you do the best. That's an easy statement, but how do you make research out of it? Well, we have a questionnaire, uh, an inventory of strengths with 240 items where we can measure those 24 character strengths. It exists in English and in German. I just come to the important part, my doctorate. Claudia Harzer and I did study positive experiences at work, the feeling of calling and what are the conditions for it. Now, what are positive experiences at work? I mean, you are at work and have a majority of the time pleasant feelings. You have a high level of engagement. You find your work meaningful and overall you are satisfied with your work. That's what we measured on this side. Just the higher the score, the more your pleasant experience at work. Now, if, you, if it's important that you can be yourself, so there needs to be a match between what your job allows you to do or demands and the strengths that you have, especially those that are very central for you that are signature strengths. So what did we do? We gave our instruments to um, 1,000 people we looked at the signature strength, so those of those 24 that are highest in people, no matter what they are. But we also asked uh, for all 24 strengths, which of those are required at your current workplace. So the rest was just combining. So we had people who either had no strength, that's very unusual, but no strengths that they could use at the current job. We had those who could use one of those that they really had and which they could apply frequently. Two, three, four, five, and seven. And then the matter is just uh, calculating. So what we found among 1,100 people that 
the more of what makes you, the more of your character strengths that you can apply at work, the higher the positive experience that there is at your workplace. We also asked spouses, peers, friends to fill in the character instrument uh, and still asked our participants how positive do you feel at work, how engaged you are, how meaningful you find your work. Um, and still, it's the same function. Then we also asked how strongly you think your work is a calling. Well, what we found generally is that four and more strengths at your current work, then uh, positive experiences start getting high. The same actually for work as a calling, uh, here in the self-report and in the peer reports. So basically calling or uh, that you really like your job, that you know this is what I want to do, uh, is based on first knowing who you are, what are your signature strengths, and then finding a work place that allows you to act uh, according to those strengths. If you don't have it, you can recraft your work. You, you might train your character strengths, that's a different matter, or you move on to something else, and that's basically what we see in, uh, at the job market. So that's one of the nicest findings that we could have. Something similar, we look at the strengths that people have. This is the highest strength they have, no matter what it is, so any of those 24 might even be spirituality or anything. Now, how strongly do they have those strengths? So how, how prevalent is it? Uh, you can see that this predicts the amount of positive experiences at work. So there are indeed some central traits, some central character strengths that are typical for a person. And the more you have of those, uh, the more you like your work. Another experience, okay, that's the exact function, but that's not so important. Another experience that we had in research is we looked for positive interventions. So positive psychology has a very different approach to changing people than classical therapy. There are little interventions like well being grateful or training certain things that are shown in the past to be uh, conducive to increases in happiness, but also decrease in depressive symptoms. Now, in an online study with several thousand people, we found the following. So I'm just focusing on this one. People were asked to identify their highest strengths, the top strengths, and then for two weeks on every day, they were asked to use this strength in a new way, in a way that they haven't used it before. For example, if uh, curiosity is something that's high, well, apply curiosity to areas that you haven't done before. <laughs> then we measured increase, uh, we measured happiness before, after these two weeks, one month after, three months after, six months after, we also used depress, uh, depression. And then you can see the effects that using signature strength had such an impact on people's life that even for the time afterwards, uh, there were increases in well-being, in happiness, and decreases in depression. They are not tremendous, but they are significant and they are sustainable. And comparing to other interventions, this was one of the best things that we could do. So knowing your strengths, identifying them, using them, and trying to create a fit between who you are and your job will increase satisfaction. Strengths are also good for your general life satisfaction. Uh, these are data that we have from our website, uh, several thousand people. This is how satisfaction with life usually is distributed. Four would be neutral and neither satisfied nor dissatisfied. You can see most of the people are on the happier side, some are below. The mean is roughly here. But the question is what determines how content, how happy, how satisfied people are. Now, there are old ideas 
going back to Aristotle, who just said, well, cultivate your virtues, cultivate the good things in you, and this leads to the good life. Well, in our study, this mean, meant we look for life satisfaction, we look for those 24 strengths, and then we see in a large sample how those things converge. Now, don't be bothered by the correlations. Basically, what we see is this bar shows how strong the positive association is. Now, we can see that all strengths, with the exception of modesty, which has a very modest contribution, but most strengths <laughs> have a very uh, good impact on life satisfaction. So, having those strengths makes you uh, or goes along with higher satisfaction with life. Now, if you look closely, it's hope, zest, love, curiosity, gratitude, bravery that have the strongest contribution. Also, and that's the blue bar, when our friends judge our strengths and I judge how happy I am. So clearly, even when different people are involved just to not have confounding of data, this effect is there. Now, what about work satisfaction? Another study. We usually find those, hope, zest, love, curiosity, gratitude, perseverance. Now, of course, you are happy with your work if the payment is right, if the, whatever, the company has the right policy. So there are so many external factors, but what's the contribution from inside? Do character strengths play a role across different jobs? Now that's what we have here. The study smaller relationship, but zest, hope, perseverance, curiosity, love, gratitude are the ones that predict how people, how content people are with their jobs. Again, uh, those strengths could be trained, uh, or you optimize the use of the strengths that you have by approaching more parts of your work um, through your strengths rather than weaknesses. So just a take home message, love is important, you find it everywhere, curiosity is important, and you find it everywhere. <laughs> I always use animals as well because when I was trained, animal psychology was very important to show <laughs> zest vitality. I mean, going to work with the right attitude, uh, even when, well, it's always the same people and still the same work that's left over. If you come there with a good attitude, <laughs> you will like it. <laughs> and just to complete the five, hope, optimism. That's one of the important factors. <laughs> Assuming you will make it and uh, Gratitude. So those things are actually the strengths that unfortunately are not trained in life. I mean, if you look at schools, only one of the wisdom strengths, curiosity, is leading to satisfaction with life. This is why people, school teachers thought of bringing more of positive psychology knowledge into school because, well, one of the aims could be to lay the foundation for having happier lives and building the character is one of those. So if you want to know what your signature strengths are, we could go to those websites, fill in the VIA instrument, get your 24 strengths. And then these are criteria that shows you, um, is this really my signature strength? So, I mean, I would like to build my life around those things that I can do well. So what are signature strengths? Well, you have to have the feeling that you own the strengths. That's really me. That's a real me. Then being excited when you do those things. I mean, I get those excite this excitement when I'm analyzing data. That's really fascinating. <laughs> my students wouldn't understand it, but that's uh, my strength. Well, a quick learning curve, or that you have the feeling you have to engage uh, in this strength. So when you see, for example, if fairness is something very important, you have to step in when you see things are interest. So there are several things that might help people to find out what they really are. 
for example, when you use the strengths, you're not tired afterwards, you feel invigorated. And I think that's one of the topics here, to be engaged. Now you are engaged, you have flow, when you can do things that go along with your, that play to your strengths. So knowing strengths is very important. Just as a, a completion, I mean, where is psychology? Traditionally, uh, we looked at what goes wrong with people. I mean, here is one approach, it's just uh, psychopathology. I mean, those people see what can go wrong with people. And you can see this is uh, affective lability, anxiousness, callousness, cognitive distortion, and so on. So there is one part that describes uh, how bad things can go. Now, character strengths are just complementing. They say how good things can go. And now, we, for the first time, we have a map of strengths that show in what domains people can flourish. And I mean, I, I think some people are here from the HR background. So how does this relate to traditional things that you know? The character strengths can be grouped. There are emotional strengths, intellectual strengths, interpersonal, volitional, and spiritual. The things that can go wrong in people are grouped. Here you see four bigger things. And the traditional approach to measuring personality is here represented by the big five. Now we have extroversion, neuroticism, openness to experience, agreeableness, conscientiousness. And here we can see where uh, psychopathology adds on, on the left side, and where virtues and character strengths are. Well, they ex ex accentuate the traits that we know. So this is what I wanted to tell you. So basically, I think the feeling of a calling is closely related to uh, knowing your strengths, using your strengths at work, and maybe optimizing the use of strengths by, let's say, approaching more types of work using your character strengths than you did in the past. Thank you.